this is part three of a part of a four part series. And we are doing people, plants and programs, specializing and in introducing you to all of the National Garden Club um, school curricula. Right now, we have four schools on our lineup. You've already heard about Flower Show School and Gardening School. And today we're bringing you landscape design and next month we'll bring you environmental study. Without further ado, I want to introduce you to the National Garden Club's um, Incorporated Landscape Design Chairman. Greg has been doing this for a number of years. Um, he is on the screen with you if you would spotlight him. And Greg, I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell us all about Landscape Design School. Thank you, Trish. Good afternoon and good morning to those of you in the West. I'm coming to you from California. Uh, Lands, I'm, as Trish said, your NGC Landscape Design School Chairman. I'm a Master Landscape Design Consultant. Landscape Design School was the second of NGC's educational schools after Flower Show School, and it dates back to 1958. Um, in California, where I am, we started conducting the program in 1959. So that's, I've been involved with this for a long time, but not nearly back to then, but <laughs> we've been doing this for many years. And many people have gone through the program and many people have become landscape design consultants. I first took a landscape design school course in 1993. And it was so interesting that I completed the four course series and joined a garden club so that I could become a landscape design consultant. And I've been taking courses and refreshers ever since. This school endeavors to develop a sense of appreciation, pride and knowledge about private, public and historical gardens to make students better informed to promote positive changes in our surroundings to encourage beauty, utility, convenience, sound ecological practice, and ease of maintenance, to encourage better understanding of the landscape design process, to promote landscapes that will sustain sound management. Over the years, there's been an increasing focus in the curriculum on the interrelationship of the landscape to the environment and emphasis that we must all be stewards of the land. Um, really, it's all about having a greater appreciation of the natural and man-made landscape. And why have a landscape design school? To educate members and the public, to have outreach to the public, to have publicity about your club or state organization. It, this can possibly uh, lead to fundraising because if you budget appropriately and then market appropriately and get more people in than you planned for, you can make some money a number of times this has happened. Master gardeners often can get continuing education credit by attending landscape design schools. So you want to look into that. Um, and landscape design school expands on what you learn on in gardening school, and it's interrelated to environmental school. And it can help you to plant America effectively and uh, in a well-maintained manner. So this program uh, of four 10-hour courses, uh, as all the schools have four courses, currently covers 30 required topics and four supplemental subjects. So each, um, each of the four courses uh, has nine hours of required material and one hour of supplemental or special interest material. And we have in the curriculum a range of 93 suggested topics in the curriculum that was revised in 2019. And uh, still others that you come up with are available that can be approved by your accrediting chairman. So course one includes learning about your ecosystem, design for the environment and developing your garden plan. Course two addresses the site analysis segment of the landscape design process. Color in the landscape is featured in course one and uh, structures in the landscape in course two. Uh, landscape design from ancient times to 1840 is covered in course one development of North American landscape design in course two, 
and contemporary landscape design trends in course four. As I mentioned at the, right before we got started, when Trish was asking people what their uh, favorite courses or things about landscape design school were, I know that I was impressed with the history in my first course and really appreciated that. And I think to this day that remains maybe my favorite because there's a long and rich history associated with this. So preservation of historic sites is covered in course two. And I see that many of our uh, landscape design councils and consultants take tours to historic sites and I think are learning all the time about historic landscapes. You'll see examples of large and small um, public and private gardens and landscapes as you learn the details of landscape design process in a one hour session in course two and in two more hours in course three. While courses may be taken in any order, each course builds upon the previous one. So it's really preferable that you take them in order, but, but you don't have to do that. Mm. Course four includes community participation in landscaping projects and history and development of community gardens. Landscape Design School is taught by professionals with expertise in a variety of fields in many cases by teaching and or practicing landscape architects. And uh, some of our instructors have been NGC Award of Excellence winners. We've been very privileged to have in uh, several states, uh, people like Bruce Crawford and um, uh, in, uh, and landscape design um, Award of Excellence winner from West Virginia, whose name I don't recall at the moment. Um, and various people who have spoken to us at NGC conventions have been some of the friends of the Landscape Design School and instructors, so we've been very fortunate. Creating your home garden is the subject of a three-hour class in course three and is given more emphasis in the current curriculum than was previously the case. It's based, uh, and doing this is based on input and suggestions from those who have taken these courses. So uh, we do listen to you. As I said, the curriculum was last revised in 2019, incorporating a number of requests and comments that we had had up until that time. There's news about Landscape Design School and most issues of the National Gardener, which is required reading for students and consultants. And for years, most issues have included a landscape design feature article <clears throat> that explores some specific aspect of landscape design and sometimes gives examples of projects that were carried out by those who took these courses. Hmm. Uh, one of these articles has been part of the exam process in each course. And this morning, I just looked over the uh, National Gardener um, issues just from this term looking at some of the things that we've had. And uh, we've had several articles from Bruce Crawford in New Jersey, who's a landscape architect and has uh, previously worked at Rutgers University and is one of NGC's Award of Excellence winners. And uh, he has written several articles about landscaping with particular kinds of plants, ornamental grasses and autumn crocus and uh, heptacodium and bulbs, and uh, uh, we've had another article on landscaping with cutting flowers and, and an article on why have landscape design school. And we're so grateful to Jerry Ann Holtzman for her support of the schools and landscape design schools with the information she's included and working with our authors. And then we have Newscape, which is the semi-annual newsletter about landscape design councils and schools. And it has been called the best advertisement for landscape design schools. I hope you're familiar with it. And if you're not, I hope you'll take a look at our website because we have issues dating back to 2011 posted in the member resources section, right where National Gardener is posted. And Newscape issues offer examples of trips and tours taken by landscape design students and consultants and projects carried out by them. 
And I'm so happy to see earlier that Caroline Carbaugh is able to be on the call. She's traveling in South America. She says she's in Brazil right now. And she has been our editor for several terms and does such a wonderful job with this colorful publication. And looking just at the issues from this term, uh, this is a twice a year uh, publication. Uh, we've had uh, information about council tours in Connecticut. Maryland is always taking tours and telling us about the landscapes and uh, historic sites that they visit. Uh, Missouri told us about their conducting their landscape design school, and so did Montana. Uh, New Jersey tells us that uh, preparing your spring gardens can utilize landscape design tools. And uh, we have information on landscape design projects in California and vertical gardens. So uh, this is just a wonderful resource to anyone that wants to conduct a school or is conducting a school or is interested in taking the school. So I cannot recommend that highly enough. Um, upon completion, uh, and you may find uh, news about landscape design schools, hopefully in your state and region publications as well. So upon completion of all four courses, including passing the multiple choice exam for each course, one becomes a landscape design consultant. And uh, you don't have to take the exams if you're not interested in becoming a landscape design consultant, but for the many who are interested in having that certification, um, take the exams and become a consultant. And it is hoped that consultants will continue studies beyond that point in order to learn new developments and see new examples of good land use. Consultants uh, can refresh for credit as, as often as once each calendar year. And to remain in good standing, they must refresh for credit at least once within a five-year period. So this is the same as gardening and environmental schools. And after completing four refreshers for credit, one becomes a master landscape design consultant. And uh, hopefully as a consultant will uh, work within their clubs or in their states, uh, presenting uh, programs, uh, writing articles. And again, there's many ideas in Newscape for, for some of these activities. And sometimes in the National Gardener, we have some of these as well. Since becoming a landscape design consultant 26 years ago in 1997, I've taken 19 refreshers for credit and in addition to attending others to proctor or help support or administer the event or just to learn. So I know some of our consultants wait the five years until they're going to lapse and then they look for somewhere to refresh, but why would you want to attend one of these events only every five years when they're so interesting and informative? There's always something new to be learned. The NGC website has lots of information about Landscape Design School and all the NGC schools. Scheduled courses are listed here. Uh, there may, uh, the scheduled courses may be conducted in the classroom or by Zoom or as a hybrid depending on the wishes of the sponsoring organization. And the sponsoring organizations are a garden club or a district or a council or a state garden club organization, and in some cases, a region. Uh, so they, they make the decision. Now, a couple of considerations. We, we've had quite a few uh, Zoom landscape design school courses uh, during the pandemic. And fortunately, Zoom enabled us to carry on with schools. Uh, it, it seems like since the pandemic has ended, there have not been as many landscape design schools by Zoom as there have been gardening and environmental schools. And um, I've, I've surveyed some of the states regarding this, and, and some of the reasons are they some have uh, instructors that they like to work with that have not been willing to do Zoom. Uh, some, I think, were just so glad to get back together that they have wanted to uh, meet in person, and various other reasons were given. But one consideration is that uh, two of the courses, 
course three and course four in landscape design school present some challenges, I think, in doing them by Zoom. But uh, people might want to consider having a school where they have, if they don't do the whole school by Zoom, that they might do course one and course two by Zoom, and maybe do course three and course four in the classroom. And, and, the, and the considerations here, and their challenges, and they've, they've been met by Zoom, so they, they can be met by Zoom. You don't have to have them in the classroom, are that in course three, there's a, a, th a three hour course on creating your own home garden landscaping plan. And this involves the instructor working with the students and examining the plans that they're coming up with. And in course four, you have four hours of lecture and tour involving evaluations of landscape designs and that's evaluation of different sites. So those two things, can present some challenges, but um, you need to decide at the local level how you want to uh, deal with that. Mm -hmm. So check the listings in uh, on the website periodically. Uh, what you're seeing on the screen is you go to Landscape Design School, obviously. And when you get there, uh, you have the tabs for the different courses and you need to click on each tab because what comes up when you go into that screen is just course one. So you're, we've had people that have said, well, there's not a lot of courses offered. Well, you need to click on each of those different tabs to see all of the different courses that are available. And currently, I think we have nine courses available, uh, two of them by Zoom. I think maybe one of those was just uh, conducted. But, but new courses are registered on an ongoing basis. And as soon as they get registered through the accrediting chairman and with NGC headquarters, they are listed on the website. So the school's resources pages also um, on the website contains lots of additional information, mm -hmm. including the school's handbook and the forms. And these are primarily used by the national, state, and local schools chairman involved in the administration of the program. But the handbook contains general information about environmental gardening and landscape design schools and consultants and its first 24 pages. And then section 10 on pages 49 to 65 contains the information specific to landscape design school, including the curriculum. Now, we do still have a few states that began school series prior to July of 2019, which is when we implemented the new curriculum. So those states have been presenting it on the old curriculum uh, using stewards of the land as a textbook. And uh, there is separate curriculum sheets for those. But I think we're down now to three states. Well, five, I think, but two of them are finishing this month. And then I think we'll just have three states outstanding that are um, operating on the old curriculum. So how do you conduct a landscape design school? Review the local chairman task checklist, which is schools form 13 on, on the website and the state chairman uh, task checklist also on the website um, on the school's resources pages that we were just talking about and then discuss with the landscape design school accrediting chairman assigned to your region. Ask questions. Landscape design consultants or consultants from environmental and gardening schools have exposure to the process and requirements and they can be a big help. So Trish, that's what I have and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Most of the information that we need is on the website and just in case this is the first time you've ever been on a Membership Monday, the website we're talking about is www.gardenclub.org. Gardenclub.org. And then on the across the top, you'll see a, like maybe eight tabs and you just click on school. And then you will go ahead and choose Landscape Design School. And it'll take you to a page that has a ton of information on it. Correct, Greg? Absolutely. And that's really your starting point. It's an excellent starting point. Okay, that's awesome. So 
Um, I really wanted us to you know, get an overview of landscape design school before we get into the meat and potatoes, which is what is it like to attend a school? And here to tell us all about that is um, Sherry Molinari from California. So Sherry, how long ago, there you are, how long ago did you attend Landscape Design School? Um, I went last year, I I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, probably 21 and 22, you know, because they get separated out. And I started with one and and, uh, went all the way through. It was a five-hour drive from my home, but I was determined to take this course. Um, I have done gardening, and I've done two series of environmental. I've been waiting for the other to come up. So uh, t- what I really liked about member of uh, Landscape Design School, I mean, really was everything. I love the history of how gardens developed all the way back to, you know, forever and um then it goes through all the periods of uh the people in america and uh from like the fur the indians and and you know things like that and then people coming to america um mostly kind of designed from what they knew Mm -hmm. and now in the united states uh Mostly our landscape design is West, what they call Western. Everything has finally come around, you know, to kind of a specific style. Um, okay, so as far as the school, one, of, uh, one thing, at learning about color and the color wheel and the opposite colors and what colors create calmness or wanting to do something, you know, that, that so that was fun. Um, and, and then it, Doing that and using a color wheel is helpful for me in floral design. <laughs> so that was really good. Um, you know, if you're helping someone, the very first thing you want to know is why are they redesigning their area? And um, sometimes things have just gotten out of control, maybe need to be removed or they want to create new hardscape sidewalks, some borders and hardscape is, is that. And um, others are just building a home, perhaps to have, have a, a blank slate. Yeah, starting so, from scratch. Mm-hmm. Starting Pardon? from scratch. Yeah, <laughs> from scratch, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, like how we used to cook. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, the first things are to consider are um, like water, irrigation, um, drainage, light. Um, and uh, we had in one course, they even showed us all the types of fittings we could use and how to build, a, you know, do for the water. And um, I live in a mobile home. I don't really have to worry about that too much. But um so, you know, starting from scratch and looking at, at and, you know, sloping away from the home so the water doesn't come in and, and just all this really interesting stuff. Um, lighting is like, um, I'm sure everyone knows who's been, like, you know, or just knows from being a gardener or anything. The east side of your home is the morning sun and then it moves away and you have shade. And then the south side of the house is always the hottest. Mm -hmm. And the west side is still hot, but it's a cooler because it's wait. The day is waning. So, and then of course the north side is shade. So that kind of determines too what plantings you will do. If your biggest space is a shade, you're going to, you know, be better off with shade plants. But um, I found that really interesting because then I'm outside and I'm looking, okay, this is the east, and, you know, most of the early sun. I have the west in my front windows. So um, I have a lot of succulents because when uh, California's had their drought for so many years, and I just love them because they, they can be so colorful and, and wonderful. I just had a plant sale the last two days, so. 
Um, so really, and so when you're planning out too, besides first, you know, finding out about your irrigation, your, uh, all that, the drainage, um, where's, oh, you have to define your, your hardscape, mm -hmm. your sidewalks, your planter, whatever, because that does, defines the lines of mm -hmm. the yard. And, um, but as far as I really love everything about the school, we had a wonderful professor. I made new friends. I mean, there were people there from Paradise, California, who had all like lost their homes three years ago. Mm -hmm. So they were coming. Um, Shane Looper, who we lost this year, uh, was there, and we just had so much fun. <laughs> and, Sherry, let um, me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Um, what was your impetus for taking the course to begin with? Why did you oh, take the course? Well, um, I think mine particularly was because I have done garden school. Mm -hmm. I did the two courses of environment. I just want to to go through the schools. I, flower show school, I, I don't know. You know, it would be good for me. I just don't want to be a judge. <laughs> okay. Okay. But, um, and I know we're short of judges in our state, but I, um, I just can't fit it into my schedule. <laughs> but you really wanted to kind of build on the knowledge of gardening and environmental. Ab absolutely. And that next leap into designing your own landscape. Yeah. And I, um, now I'm helping a neighbor. Mm -hmm. who has a blank slate in the front and she has this huge curved piece of granite that is just beautiful in the center. Mm -hmm. So, and where she lives, you can't plant in the ground. So I said, well, we'll dig a home sink a pot. You right. know? There you go. There you yeah. Go. So I'm giving her hand somewhat, um, she wants something to come up behind the granite, which is about, I don't know, a foot, foot and a half tall. Right. So I suggest the aeoniums, mm -hmm. all the different colors of aeoniums, you know, coming up behind. Mm -hmm. And then we'll plant some kind of low bedding plant in the front. And um, have you consulted with other garden consultants and landscape design consultants in your area? I, I, there aren't many in my area. There aren't many in your area. Okay. Yeah, so um, I do get it from one club. Um, I'm in Greg Pecorsi's club. Okay. And um, then I'm in my local club here in um, town. And uh, so I guess, you know, the most I've talked about it in a while about plants and stuff is at the plant sale. Yeah. Yeah. Telling yeah. people, you know, will it get big? Will it stay low? Right. Will it flower? Um, and I'm getting better and better at that. You know, every time I, I take my books and I had, I even gave away a sunset book because um, a new member in our club didn't have one for goodness okay. sake. <laughs> You're just spreading the wealth. Let me ask you this question. Um, how did you find the exams? Oh, I found the exams extremely easy. Okay. I mean, they're they were short. Open book, right? Pardon me? Open book? Some. Some were okay. open book. Some, um, there were, co I remember one test where there were questions from the National Gardener. You mm -hmm. know, there had been in the landscape design articles. Right. Um, we had to read that. I found the book um, extremely interesting. Okay. Um, what uh, favorite? So I I just really liked all of it. I just found it so informative. I drive by a yard now and I go, why did they plant plant that big tall thing in front of that short beautiful thing? I mean, you know, your right. eye just goes to it. <laughs> right. So now, like with this this armful and this mindful of knowledge, you're seeing your entire landscape differently. That's I right. do. I do. I mean, even my own, because I have this beautiful low green, it turns red, you know, with the sun. Well, it's behind a big um, sticks on fire, euphorbia. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> just when I was, I mean, 
when I was planting, because I put two euphorbias um, on either end, and then I had to move this other plant, and the spot was over here. It was empty. Right. But right. <laughs> you can't really see the beauty of it because the euphorbia is in front. So now you're redesigning your entire landscape. You're redesigning <laughs> your neighbors. I, you know, I have slowly. And I'll tell you another bit, fun part of the thing. And Greg mentioned it, was having to make a... Nice. And some people did it, I mean, really fancy and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we had, you know, the symbols for different plants. And, and then we I have a whole list of what the plants are. And um, so... Like on either side of my house, I only have a foot and a half of planting. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You and have a very so, narrow window there. Yeah. And yeah, that's, and then in the back, I only have eight feet deep, but no, oh, wait, where am I? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Right. But anyway, I have even a, oh, here in the back, it's, uh, it's 10 feet is all I have. Okay. But I have a four foot raised bed. Right. And I have a big double shelf for my plants. And then I've put tall things back here because um, there's a fence there. Yeah. But yeah, I have moved <laughs> plants. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. What would you say to a garden club member or a member of the general public or a master gardener that's thinking about attending landscape design school? What do you think are the major benefits? Well, I would tell anybody to take it. I think they'll find it very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. The professors are very professional, but, you know, not stuck up or anything. Like, I am really good. I enjoyed that. So I would recommend it to anybody just if they even want the knowledge for their own yard. Mm -hmm. If they wanted right. to redesign their own yard. I mean, on our blueprint, some of us just did an area. They did an area in their yard that they want to redo. Mm -hmm. And so this, this class was really helpful for them when you measure that spot and you put it on paper and then start deciding what plants you want in there. So I think, you know, for me, it's more of a, a personal thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I'm at my age going to go out and become, you know, a, a landscape gardener or something like that for anybody else. Helping a neighbor. I'm always telling new neighbors to move in. Do you want any plants? Come to my yard. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. So, you know, it's share the wealth. And if nothing else, take it for yourself mm -hmm. because you meet new people and you're, yeah, I, I loved it. That's great. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience and your enthusiasm about it, because I know that, you know, once you learn something, you just want to share it and you just want to tell yeah. everyone about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Trish. You're welcome. Next up, let's hear about what it's like to host your own landscape design school in your local area. And we have the next speaker is Susan Epstein from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, my hometown. So, so much fun to, to organize and conduct a school. And it's, you, you have students like Sherry who just make it all worthwhile. You know, her enthusiasm was fabulous. And I think most of the people who come to take landscape de design school, they are all that enthusiastic. So um, it's, it's an honor. Um, to yeah. to organize it but how difficult is it to create a landscape design school if you've never done so before because I know you you had the experience of being a first timer several I years. did I did but you know Greg uh it's been great you know working with us the whole committee you know everybody um up on national that's on the on the committee they are such terrific resources and You've got the guidebook um, and the guide, you know, the like you just said, National Garden Club, and you go there and you go to Landscape Design School. The, the checklist is there, start at the top, and it, it's just step by step by step, you know, when you get step one and two done, then you're ready for three, um, and it's just laid out. I mean, it could not be any easier. You know, you have to have a connection probably for instructors or somebody to go to that you could get your instructors. Um, 
But other than that, you know, no people in the trade. Um, it, it's just laid out. It's really perfect. You probably need, uh, you need about six months. I'd say give yourself six months. Otherwise, you know, you're really going to be up against um, timeline and, and deadlines and things like that. Um, Plus you want to be able to advertise it. You do. Absolutely. Um, and, and I have a, I'm very fortunate that I have a committee. There's um, three or four of us um, and we all work together. We all decided on a date. We picked that date um, from there. We, submitted our request to the National Garden Club. Um, I think it, Greg, it's like form one or something like that. And now we're off and running. Um, and, you know, once you get that done, then you make sure that you've got your facility. We actually made sure we had our facility available before we submitted our dates. Um, kind of a critical component there. Yeah, um, let's talk about facility for just a minute. Sure. Um, what would you say would be an ideal facility for Landscape Design School? I think you need a facility that you can have ample tables so all the students can be at a table because, you know, everybody wants to take notes. That's how I learn is I, I take notes. So I think everybody needs to have a place that they can easily sit down and write. So you need to have it big enough. I mean, we usually have anywhere from 80 to 100 people, I would say. This year, we haven't done it since 2020. So we're hoping that we're going to have 100 and 20 people. The facility that we've chosen can take up to 200 people. So, oh, wow. you know, we're, we're going to be good to go. Um, of course, then cost is a factor. Cost is absolutely a factor. And, um, you know, you just have to work that into your budget and you do need to submit a budget to your sponsoring organization. We're sponsored by the Garden Club of South Carolina. So we had to submit our budget um, and how we were going to cover cost. And we've got, we've been ongoing. So we've kind of got that down pat, but um, yeah, once you get the budget done, your facility secured um, approval for the courses, then you start plugging in the instructors. And that's the really fun part, you know, is sitting down and saying, Oh, who could we get to teach that? And who could we get to teach that? And Trish, as you know, we have, great landscape architects in this area, plus professors. Um, and we usually bring in one special kind of a, a keynote speaker. If yeah, you big know. Name. yeah, a big name, you know, and um, we've been really fortunate over the years. We've had Bill Welch from Texas come and Greg Grant from Texas, Carl Gerson's from Longwood. So, you know, we, we Try like this, it just get that one big name that's going to attract everybody. And then we depend on our local landscape architects or regional, really regional, because we draw uh, from Atlanta, from North Carolina. I consider those regional. So you really try to zero in on professional landscape architects or professionals in the trade so I that do. they're getting accurate information. I do. I do. And I think that's uh, what's required in the guidebook is that you really, you know, it tells you, gosh, you need it. the best person to teach this course is a city planner or the best person to teach this one is a landscape, a horticulturist. Mm -hmm. So um, unfortunately for me, I'm a horticulturist. So, you know, I can step in if something happens and it's like, uh oh, <laughs> I can do that. So and the best way to learn a subject is to teach a subject. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> So, so let's talk about your committee for just a minute. Yes. Um, you had mentioned that you have a core group. Um, so what would you say, you know, you need about five or six individuals and what are those um, tasked to do? Um, they are tasked. I have a registrar, which is great for me because I, I, I can do a spreadsheet, but do I like to? No. Um, and I have, um, fortunately, we have a girl who is so good at a spreadsheet and putting it all together. Um, she is terrific. So she sends out the invitations. She keeps up with the confirmations. She accepts, you know, all the registrations. Um, she handles all those scores at the very end that you have to send in to national and she sends those in. So um, I'm really, I, I, I'm so grateful to Karen for what she does. Um, she's really a godsend. And we usually have a treasurer. Um, you know, I don't want to have to be the one to manage the books. I can. I can sign off on the account. But I think it's good to have checks and balances. You know, I want somebody to, to check my work and, you know, make sure that everything's above board. I don't want any kind of gray area. 
Um, and we also usually have our checkbook audited um, at least once a year or, or twice a year at least. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so everything is kind of kept above board and there's no, you know, no question about the committee, anybody on the committee or any of the instructors. Are um, all of your committee members landscape design consultant graduates? No, interestingly oh, enough, no. Um, my co-chair this year has only taken two courses. So um, we are very excited. He's very enthusiastic though. And he's already talking about advertising and he's talking, you know, he's already got a table set up at the next garden club meeting and, um, you know, who do we need to hit? Can we run an ad here? Can we run an ad there? So, yeah, no, you don't have to be a consultant. You know, you can just be, you can work towards it as you go along. Or you can just be a worker bee, right? That's right. You can be a worker bee. So you've got a chairman, you've got a co-chairman, you've got a treasurer, you've got a registrar. Yeah. Um, and then you may or may not overlap or add other people to proctor the tests. We usually just proctor ourselves. You know, we're all there. There's all five of us there. And we, um, we, we just, they're, I feel like they're honest group, you know? I mean, it's, uh, they're there to learn. And if, you know, I don't think we, I don't, we've never had an issue. And when you first started, how long have you been doing this now? I think Trish oh, since about 2008. Okay. Eight or nine. Okay, so yeah, quite a number of years. Yes, and so now you're a seasoned professional at this. Wow. So, so all of the people that are out there um, that have hosted maybe one or two or are thinking about it, what would you say would be the things that you've learned as you've gone along that you wish you had known in the beginning? Oh gosh, um, you know, just just make sure that you vet your instructors. That's probably what you know, what I can say, you, you want to hear them. Like, I won't have an instructor that I have not heard lecture. Um, wow. I want to make sure that they're going to be up to my qualifications, my standards. I want to be, I want to learn, but I also would prefer to have somebody lighthearted, entertaining, you know, not dry. Dynamic. Dynamic. Exactly. Dynamic. Outgoing. Okay. And then can you give us some ideas of what you do for like allied topics or tours and things like that? You know, we just kind of brainstorm and what, what's a hot topic going on right now? You know, we're talking about regenerative gardening. Um, you know, that is such a hot topic and that might even be our topic for November. We're offering course two um, in November 7th and 8th, put that plug out there if anybody wants to come to Charleston. Um, so I think, um, you know, we're looking down that avenue, maybe some grasses, um, you know, all the, the grasses, the ornamental grasses and going more to sustainability and regenerative gardening. You know, it's just whatever piques your interest. We're in such a historic area, too. You know, when we've got um, so many. Um, any other questions? Um, yes. Would you tell me on ballpark? what your average landscape design school course um, costs? Um, in the past, it's been $130. And that's for each course? That's for each course. That's right. So it's $130 once a year. And I feel like for 10 courses that you're getting, 10 lectures, I, man, that's that's value. That I've got value. That's very affordable. Money. I think so too. I think this year though we're going to have to go up to one fifty just because the cost of food. Everything else has gone up. Cost right. of food, right. my AV. Um, I do have a professional AV person that comes in um, to to manage our our AV, and he sets it up, and he's usually there at the beginning, and he's usually there at the end, and we manage it in between. But you know that's a headache too. If if your AV doesn't work, nobody's happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So, okay. Yeah. Well, folks, you've heard all of the information from a veteran yeah. uh, landscape design consultant host out of Charleston. And we hope that everybody will um, join us in Charleston for the November course, too. Um, as you heard Greg say, you don't have to take them in order. So um, now the big question is what can you do with this landscape design? Um, 
consultant degree that you have, right? We've already heard Sherry tell us a little bit about what she's doing. She's redesigning the whole neighborhood and her yard and all the neighbor's yards. I know Susan Epstein has designed a lot in the Charleston area, um, and she has a beautiful garden herself. So let's hear a really special story um, coming from down south in Mexico. And here to tell us all about that is our membership team member, Adalia Aguilar. Adalia, are you with us? Yes, ma'am, I am. Good morning to all or afternoon. Good afternoon. I am happy to be here and Trish is going to help me with an interview where I'm going to introduce Patricia Nerala, who is the heart of all this movement. She enthusiasts, her enthusiasm led her club to develop this project. And of course, Trish needs some introduction. And I'm also one of the hard hat ladies. So let's begin, Trish. Ask me anything you want. So where is this project? The project is located in um, the Gulf, of, a town in the Gulf, Mexico. It is called Tampico. And uh, it's a port, it's a big port and a touristic area. Uh, mm -hmm. The project began uh, because there is this beautiful lake near the city, which was, of course, with many years became the dump area of everything from old metal cars, beds, bicycles, anything that you threw away ended at the sea at the shore of this poor lake. Mm. So this is what they had in mind that what would happen if they could imagine to transform this uh, eyesore into a beautiful pollinator garden. So what are we seeing here? This is right along the edge of the lake? Yes, yes, but we're seeing here, not the before picture. The before pictures, I really didn't want to show. <laughs> in, 20, in 2016 to 2017, uh, the, the, the people from this garden club went with the authorities and said, this is what we have in mind and we can work with you and we can get people enthusiastic and we can. And they had this dream of making this uh, um, pollinator garden. But first they had to change the appearance in order to get sponsors. So they began by cleaning it and letting the natural Bahia grass that grew there uh, take over. And then they stalled fencing, uh, separating the lake side to the, would be the garden in order to, for safety and keep people out. So this is, once they had this site ready, they were ready to get their sponsors, but then COVID came in, but by 2020 to 2022, they cleared, they got their sponsors, the fences were installed, walkways and signage was added, and let's see what happens. So before we proceed, so what you're saying is they could not share the vision when it looked like a city dump. They yeah. had to clean it up and remediate it a little bit first, and then they went after the vision. Yes, and the, the, the site is called Laguna del Carpintero, which means the Carpenter's Lake. And signage became one of the most important factors because once they started getting their sponsors, they were providing the idea, they were selling the dream mm -hmm. of, uh, of this is going to be a place where for insects, for birds, for bats, for natural pollinators in our area to come and, and if we provide the flora, they will come here and it, on the side, it will be a beautiful place to create what they believe is and it has become an educational garden. It's educational because of the signage and all the signage was given free by several companies. Once we get to the they end, were all sponsored. Yes, the sponsors. We'll get to the end. You'll see why many of the people asking, of the people involved asking, were hard to turn down. Yeah. The, 
it is it is an educational walk that you're taking in the interest when you come in. They give you a little card and tell a little map of where you can see where you can see because during the week there's there are no volunteers. Volunteers are mostly uh, local people and school children who sign up to do and work at the gardens, but. During the week, nobody's there. So people just stroll by and come and they can read to or see the images of, mm-hmm. of what the, the garden is about, what are the parts of the plants and all that rich information. And all that rich information amongst all that signage, the idea of creating this tall vertical, uh, we call them uh, columns or walls, they are decorated with paintings or artwork from children from all the different schools in the city, from the different areas of the city. They selected and some drew, draw about the bees, other by, about the bats. And these are informative little images made by the children, which not also teaches the adults, but the children become very attracted of becoming involved in right. what is being taught. Now, in this picture, this is a great aerial view of most of the garden. This is a very large garden. How big is this project? It, the project is about 700 to 800 feet. Okay, it's, it's large. It, it, it's, it's spread in an area of about an, an, acre, an acre, acre and a half. Okay. But it's a long, it's a long side a garden to the to the to the border of the lake and it's also delineated as you see in this picture and each area has its own function correct yes each area has its own function and most important is that you see that fence keeping the persons who are in the boat from the lake if they want to come in they have to come in through security because that's a place that is full of children working during the weekend Mm -hmm. And this is a close-up of the little drawings. Oh, these are Uh, adorable. Then you can notice that there's rocks and there are little different walkways that guide you to where these drawings are pointing to identifying the different parts of the garden. Mm -hmm. And Sherry was talking about hardscape. And this is what you're talking about. The different areas of hardscape throughout this garden. So let's talk about that. Yes, let's look at the walkways. They can be made of, of sand or cement or tile, or uh, they're and and if they're made according to what they're going to be used for. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this area, we see that there's a little plaza, and these plazas are made to add signage of what gardening, what activity is going in the butterfly garden. This is the butterfly garden, and you see different. Uh, images in the back, in the middle mm-hmm. of the little plaza, and it's telling you, okay, you want to see them growing, you want to see where they are, you want to identify different areas within the, the garden, and the walkways are mostly always surrounded by rocks, which are um, all very available around the lake. Gotcha, gotcha. So this okay. is another aerial view. And you'll see different hardscapes here as well. Talk about those. Yes, yes. this one is a great picture um, because the walkway in a way defines what's going on. It tells you, okay, this area is for exercise. Uh, this area is just to stroll and look at the water or enjoy or conduct, go from one part of the garden to the other. Mm-hmm. And the walkways... Uh, let you know you, you are in the pollinator garden and that it is a teaching garden that also has exercise trails or bicycle routes for people who want. It has become, Trish, a weekend haven for people of the town. They come and they, because of the security and the, the maintenance given to the area, which is all given, they they got the sponsorship of the local authorities for that. And uh, it, uh, it attracts a lot of visitors. This is an interesting picture here because not only people are invited during the week 
also during the weekend to come and work in the garden. And the city provides people who do the actual work. Like you see here, there's a whole bunch of pots with plants in them and they're holes already made. So when the children come, they only have to do the planting. And this is part, this is an uh, early picture when the, the butterfly garden was, was being developed. But it looks like the kids are also involved in the landscape design because there are pictures of what is getting planted where. Yes, they, right? they have, we have to keep in mind that the children uh, come in sometimes and uh, they, they're guided by, the, by whoever's in charge of the planting. And then they will tell them, okay, go, this plant goes here, this type of plant goes here. And usually what is very interesting is that these people who are teaching the, or telling the children where to plant, they are also telling them why it is being planted there. Okay. The nader is going to attract. So they're really, do, the whole process is educational. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, this is another circular plaza with the, with the signage going. And as you can see, the, the project was flat land and, and, and it was, it was created, it was uh, designed in different levels where in this way, you have, in this view, you have an upper level where there's people walking just as enjoying the garden and mm -hmm. then a lower level, which they're enjoying part. I think this is the area for bats. Oh, okay. Okay. So and these are said, yep. Yes, the different, you can see the different height of the layers of the plant that they use. Mm -hmm. So here we have more signage. And what I love about this is it shows the entire life cycle. Yes, yes, <laughs> because uh, there, there might be children who do not know yet how to read mm -hmm. and they come, and, but they learn from looking at this, at these images. And uh, uh, it tells them of, uh, of the characteristic. And this, to bees as pollinators is very important because near Tampico, there's a big industry that transport bees to have uh, oranges and, and other fruit, uh, fruits. Uh, pollinated? Pollinated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so for those of us who can't speak Spanish, what is the sign saying? Okay. It says... Uh, the, the egg, the larva, the pupa, and the adult. And mm -hmm. it says that they're pollinized, the most important pollinizers in our planet. And they, 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 uh, they, they transfer the pollen in their bodies and they speak about their characteristic, the two antennas and all that. Mm -hmm. And their cycle, the life cycle, how long do they, do they live? That's wonderful. What I really we, might want, we might not have all the fruit we want and enjoy if we lack these important pollinators. Right, right. Thank you. Uh, what I really want people to take away from this is to add visuals to your signage that are not just words. Because as you've said, so often you might have someone walking by that doesn't know how to read yet or just doesn't know how to read. But that visual stands out and they will implant that in their mind. Yes. Okay, let's see if I can get, there we go. Okay, and we're, back, we're now with the bees and these are the panels with the, their information and the artwork that the children have made. But here on the side, it is written in very, very simple Spanish. Uh, uh, a little poem this, that doesn't rhyme, of course, in English, but it says, that "In our, in our, in our gardens, there are flowers, and the flowers attract their friends. And what do the friends provide for us? And why is important for us to include certain plants in the, in the garden? So there's all type of artwork and instruction and visual stimuli, including." Uh, 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 structures. This is a metal structure that was donated to the garden. Let me clear mm -hmm. something here. All the plants in the garden were donated. Wow. Either by members or by uh, companies that specialize in selling these types of plants. 
most of them, most of them are uh, native to the area, which makes it very important to, excuse me, let me <clears throat> decline this, sorry. Uh, this is very important in the area because the, these are natives. Mm -hmm. So people can, can have them also in their home. Right. And for those people that are strolling through saying, oh, I love that. I want to, that we're also making sure that we're passing along information that is environmentally accurate. Yes. Yes. Here's and more. Then, science. Yeah. Now here we are with the bees. And then it also, like you said, it involves written and visual information. Mm -hmm. And we usually during the weekend, there are volunteers in the garden who will show you several things. Most, many of these volunteers are children, and you'll know why later. Um, they will take you and show you, come and see, this is, a, this is the development of this butterfly, or this is the gross uh, process of the bees, and they're there to show people also Today we have a migration of such and such butterfly. And you can imagine when the when the butterflies, different butterflies come in, people are very attracted to the garden to see their different colors. And these are some of them. And I'm sure that that makes people come back again and again so that they can see different migrations. Yes. See and here's some more. The different uh, um, butterflies on Lantana. Mm, gorgeous. And this is a uh, this is a very interesting um, view because you see part of the garden is not exactly by the lake lakeside mm -hmm. because sometimes when the bay increases the rivers will flood into the and they would have a little flooding basin there so that is why you see areas near the garden which are only Bahia grass because mm -hmm. they might flood. Mm, okay. And of course, you know, to some of us, we look at this and we're like, oh my God, an invasive species, but the Ruella is native there. Yes, it's native and it's controlled, you know, it's controlled. The, the whole process is controlled. And yes. they have, a, they, they have a, also on the side, uh, people cultivating more. So when one plant dies, a new one is planted to replace it. So it's a continuous and they do this also with the lantana. We know lantana can be very, very poisonous. So there's a special uh, information in the entrance about whether the plants are poisonous and what plants are not. And don't touch your eyes when you're working in the garden, wear your gloves. And usually you see the children all with little hats and their gloves on when they're working in the garden. They are, they are taught. And this is a um, tunera diffusa, which is a very interesting. Some of these plants attracts the bats. And there's something interesting about the bats because they come in the evening. So mm -hmm. early in the evening when the, the night begins to fall in, they turn on the lights. They put them on a lower, uh, they lower the lights. So there's only just the diffused light to walk in the garden. So oh. you can see the bats coming in and pollinize. I bet that's quite an adventure. Yes, this is Roselia kittiformis. That's another attract um, all kinds of bees. Also. Mm -hmm. And hummingbirds. I know the hummingbirds. And hummingbirds. This is a favorite of the hummingbirds. You're right. The firecracker plant. And the exora is another one that the bats love. And this has become a favorite to put on the sides and everything of the garden because the Ixora, it blooms in Mexico all year long. So oh, nice. all year long, you will have flowers in different colors. So Ixora is not used only in the, in the, that, the part of the garden the, for certain pollinators, but all over the garden, just with a beautified purpose. Right, right. So talk to me about security and maintenance. Yes, this was something, you know, the garden club is made by, by ladies and the, uh, um, most of them, they're all ladies. There are no gentlemen in their club. Uh, they needed security. They needed the security. As we know, many countries don't have uh, the security we have in some of our states. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 
We can see here uh, the maintenance. The security is provided in the evening and during the day, and especially during the weekend when there's people coming in with families to picnic and enjoy the garden. And, the, and the, like I said, the fencing it from the lake is an extra uh, means of guaranteeing that if you're in the garden, nobody's going to hurt you. So yes. this makes everybody feel very relaxed, which is just part to let them know they're going to enjoy the garden. Uh, the men here were working, they'll come, they'll work, They'll keep, they'll keep mostly egg cleaning because all other activities that involve grooming or cleaning the, the plant beds, they want the people to do it and people sign up and they have a waiting list of people who want to work in the garden. So it's an overall community success. Nice. This is how I see it. And these are the originators. These are the kids. Ladies. The ladies at the kids, and it's called La Rosa's Garden Club. And La Rosa's Garden Club was, was founded in 1997, only by 14 members. Now they're 75, plus 26 to 30 children. And that is why this, it was very hard to say no for the sponsors. Mm -hmm. Because the, all the grandpas and all the great grandpas and the friends of, of them uh, were, 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 were very interesting and, and most of all impressed of the knowledge that these children already have of how to administer and take care and keep the upkeep at the type of pollinators that have been attracted. So these are the Rosas Garden Club and the Children's Garden Youth Garden Club. Members are usually all girls, but brothers are always welcome. That is what they say. Okay. It, it is a privilege mm -hmm. that you asked me to present this because I'm NGC's International Alliance on. And look at that little boy giving us the victory sign. Yes. <laughs> they dare to imagine. We dare to imagine, they say, making our dream come true. It is a privilege, as in their international alliance on, to bring this to you, because this is not a children's project. This is a community project that comes out from all NGC schools, from environmental school, members of the landscape design school, and maybe some of the members of the gardening school. We, we have people that have been trained by NGC to do the little drawings, to show people what kind of plants are adaptable to for pollinators. So all the knowledge behind this great success is thanks to NGC membership. That's and, just amazing. And, and go ahead. And don't forget when you see something that bothers you to go out and find out help like this people did. Uh, they dared, they dared to imagine, and they made their dream come true. And uh, it, it, they were very happy. They recently called to tell me that they've been included in the tourism department's uh, uh, propaganda so that they're now being known part of the touristic activities of the port of tropical port of Tampico. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to visit Tampico now just to see this beautiful project and to walk along that water. Um, the other thing I want to say is this, this looks like an amazing Plant America project. You know, have they applied? Yes. I hope they have. Yes. Um, as you know, our funding is only for NGC national members because many of our sponsors don't sell products in the international countries. Ah. But what we do is anytime we have a, uh, a little bit left over from the three or four schools, they send donations and we give certificates and those certificates are sometimes go together with $25 or $50. And the highest that has been given until now is a hundred. Wow. So uh, these certificates are usually given during the uh, NGC spring convention. That's yes, it is a plant America project. Yeah. 
So I know that everybody in the audience is probably wondering what they can imagine into reality, right? And so what would you tell them about sharing a vision? When you share a vision, you first have to become enthusiastic yourself and ask yourself, why? What will it do to help others? Mm. How will it help the flora? How will it attract the fauna? How can we all together help our natural resources? And that's the best way to work together with the community. Thank you, Adelia. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Congratulations to La Rosa's Garden Club because I think that they're doing outstanding work, not just for their community, but by building membership from the ground up with their children. I and, shall and let I'm them so know. Of yes. I shall let them know. Thank, Thank you so much for inviting me. Happy gardening, y'all. This has been a production of National Garden Club Incorporated. For more information, visit www.gardenclub.org.